What is up, everybody? This is Recap Rewind. I'm Jay Lag. And I'm NB. And we are recapping and reviewing American Horror Story Apocalypse. That's season eight, episode two. And it's called The, the Morning, Morning After. After. And make sure, guys, you stick around for the ending because we are going to go through our recap roundups, our best moments, our best lines. So be sure to stick around for that at the end of the podcast. Mm -hmm. And for anyone that's listening and all the new listeners, thanks so much for sticking around. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. You guys are the best. And let's get started. Let's get lit because this episode was really a good one. I liked it. it. I liked it. It was very fast paced. It was like all in your face right from the get go yeah. with all them snakes. Right. So, yes, let's yeah. start. So it starts off with Emily, our girl Emily, and she's like getting herself ready for bed. Like what I realized yeah. in the show is like there's no sense of time. Like there's no, like, Well, think about it. They're like, underground like in a bunker. Time. It's like what else are you going to do? Like yeah. there's no TV. <laughs> there's like nothing. Like you're just. You can't have sex. Like you're just. Exactly. You're yeah. just sitting and sleeping. So she's about eating. to go to sleep and she's about to like chill. But she hears something in uh, her room. She's like, what is that? She's like freaking out. And so she goes to the closet and snakes literally like fall she in out of nowhere. Yeah. And she starts yelling. Did you freak out? I I yelled. The first time I saw that one snake, like at the top, I was yeah. like, ah! <laughs> um, so I got scared for sure. Yeah. And uh, her guy, Timothy, comes in. Yeah. He's like, oh, shit, there's like so many oh, snakes. Oh, my God. They're everywhere. One. Yeah, like more came out. And then like Mrs. Is her name Mrs. Mead? Mrs. Mead. Uh, she came in. She's like, oh, they must be from outside. How do they get down here? And then she's like, delicious. Let's make yeah, food. Yeah, she's like, we have dinner now. Like protein. Um, we make her sound like a monster. But That's how she sounds. Yeah, basically, in our heads. But she uh, grabs the snakes, kills them. She chops like the head off. She's like, sweet, mm -hmm. let's make food. Everybody's freaking out, though, because they're like, ew, we're eating snakes. Gross, gross, gross. Well, she made a good point. Emily was like, aren't they going to have radiation, radiation in them? Yeah. Like, they'll ha they'll be infected. They're like, don't worry. I'll, like, scan them. Make sure they're <laughs> yeah. to go. Whatever. Um, so they make a soup, like a, the stew. And like, make, everybody's yeah, about they to make eat soups. it. It, show, it shows them all chopped up. Yeah. And they're about to, like, serve them. And everybody's, like, scared or gross. Grossed out. Joan Collins, like, But, like, character. I think they're all covered, right? Like, every yeah. bowl has, like, a cover. Yeah. So as soon as they open, and then they like, sit down, it up, dramatic. Did you think that that was gonna happen? Um, no. But also when it happened, I was like, true. true. Like that was the point yeah. of it all. Because the question was right away, like, where are these things coming from? Of course, they're not tunneling from under. Like I believed it. I don't know. I, I was snakes like, live underground, so like they could tunnel their way in. Sure, but like they're not like crazy snakes. There was like yeah, different yes. colored snakes. I yeah, was like, yeah, what is this rainbow true. snake action? Like yeah, so basically they they lift like the little cover over their soup bowl and like the snake is are they're back to life again, and yeah. they're alive and they're fully like in full form. Right, and everybody's freaking out and. Uh, so the, it, then I think that's when it cuts to like whatever the, the intro, the which intro. the intro has a lot of snakes in it, by the right. way. So that to me, and I'm sure for you as well, was our little nod to american horror story kevin that's um come actually through. no it wasn't oh. but you clarified so that thank yeah. you <laughs> so coven, i had no idea i felt like coven is that's that storyline so it's definitely not to coven because we know that uh the voodoo queen as we remember played by angela bassett Ma marie laveau she had the power to kind of like voodoo that shit around and we know that queenie also learned how to do voodoo so i'm sure that that's the element that's that's happening it's so, linking it you're saying so i'm excited because then does that mean that coven's like effing with them are they like once you said that i was like situation? yes i hope coven and the witches are are, are definitely like, like trying screwing to with them. yeah screwing with them trying to get into like the bunker or whatever right which we know eventually they're going to show up to the bunker, but I don't know in what context I, yeah. and how it's going to happen. Yeah. Are they going to present themselves as witches? Are they going to present themselves as regular human beings? Like, what's the situation? Yeah. I'm just really excited. And yeah. it got me thinking about what the coven, anyway, we can talk about it a little bit more later, but like what the coven's purpose is, especially now that Michael Langdon's in the storyline. Right. Um, anyway, so speaking of Michael Langdon, after that whole snake situation happens, still there's like a mystery. Like everybody's like, I don't know how that happened, mm -hmm. whatever. Like they were alive, now they're dead, they're not alive again. Um, and it's just like a mystery, but it's definitely the coven mm -hmm. in my eyes. And then it cuts to Michael Langdon being introduced to the whole group of people. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the fact that he's the lead of, or one of the leads of the cooperative. 
once again this like ominous cooperative let's let's just note right here that like everything i love the dynamic between michael langdon and yeah. sarah paulson's character mrs Ven venable venable because it's like even the way he like came up to like where she was standing right. he like pushed her aside yeah and she had to like she made a face and like she had to walk to the side and like listen to him so right. like already we know that like there's this beef between these two and like she doesn't want to give up her power it's a power dynamic right so like you yeah, know it's gonna sure. like it's gonna get to that point absolutely so he introduces himself and he he tells them about the sanctuary, which we found out about at the end of the last episode, which is a safe haven bunker, this like next level bunker that is going to help save the rest of humanity. Like it's like got all the supplies. Like, you're like once like, you're there, secure. you're good. Do um, you believe that the sanctuary exists? Honestly, no, <laughs> because it just yeah. sounds too good to be true. Mm -hmm. It really just sounds like a. But at the same time, a part of me is like then why are you lying? What is your purpose? Yeah, I so, don't believe him. I feel like this season is going to be filled with so many false promises right. to like control people and, you know, whatever. So yeah. I don't even think that... Also, I think whatever. maybe I'm just like jaded because like I watched I think The Walking Dead and like so The Sanctuary yeah. was not yeah, The Sanctuary. And there's just like this little promise of this next line. It's like, no yeah, guys, you guys exactly. are screwed. So everybody kind of gets excited, but his stipulation is not everybody's going to make it there. Yeah. And uh, he's going to judge everybody doing something called cooperation Rating, which right. is um questioning people with an interview essentially right and so mr gallant mm -hmm. um aka evan peters decides to be he's like i yeah he's, like, I'll go first. he's yeah. like the first one which is hilarious that i just said that because um our girl coco yeah. actually mentions like, she's like what is this the hunger games yeah. like we have to be selected and like we have to fight for our, our spot here like, yeah because like, so she's bullshit. like i paid for my spot so i should yeah. be here and he basically says like nobody's worthy of like a spot like yeah. you're, you have to be just we'll i'll decide that so we cut right into the interview with mr galan and we kind of get some inter like some uh like inklings of like who he is as a person a little bit because michael Landon basically says like you cannot lie mm -hmm. if you lie i will know yeah and don't try to bullshit me i just basically want to know your story anything everything yeah. everything dark everything i ask you you better just answer yeah. truthfully so he right away like attacks him attacks him like attacks this one specific thing which is why do you hate your grandma mm -hmm. or like what's your relationship with your grandma and finally mr gallant like he, he yeah he admits him. it yeah he's like i hate my grandma yeah she wants me to be this perfect gay uh who who just wants to get married with like off two Yorkies and like, and like yeah like exactly and so there's a really quick cutscene of him being like this defiant god godson yeah. grandson sorry to the grandma and how she's basically disgusted by him mm -hmm. and his like lifestyle and it gets into him talking about uh having some sexual uh like kinks he's like mm. oh so you like like he likes leather or something or he said yeah yeah and uh he's like yeah i like everything yeah and so he thinks that he's hitting on him i think like and it was kind of flirty it, it was, was. Flirty. Like, it was. Langdon, like with his beautiful hair yeah like, just, like, <laughs> his beautiful his hair is so yeah, beautiful it's <laughs> like it's definitely like his mom's it's hair like, for sure she was hair like voluminous um so he goes <laughs> over to con literally connie's, connie's hair, hair was it's on him now <laughs> i know now that i'm thinking about it, it's so funny so he uh he yeah and he's kind of like like leaning on him and he's kind of talking to him yeah he he said he asked him i think at one point mr gallant even asks are you going to are you gay right he and, asks michael that yeah right and yeah. michael is like it's like i'm not gonna talk to you about that yeah and then the interview's over and he and michael gallant is like or mr gallant is like that's it that's all you want to know yeah and but he's like oh i'm turned on by you he's like i like you a lot and then it cuts to the two lovebirds. So mm -hmm. Emily and Timothy mm -hmm. are just trying to like run away. They're trying and, like, to like bone basically. Yeah. yeah. They, they want to have sex. Yeah. They're annoyed. They're annoyed that they're there. They're annoyed that they can't have sex. And they're basically saying. And Emily's sketched out. Emily's like, this is weird. Or Tim's sketched out. Yeah. Because I think Tim asks her. He, she, he's like, what the F those snakes? And she was like, they probably just forgot to like kill them. He's like, girl, what? There he's was like, like 50 you know snakes. Like, true. how do you not? How do you forget to kill them all? Yeah. So, so they have this amazing plan. Right. They want to just run away because they're like, Michael Langdon was able to survive. Right. So there we must be something go. out there that we can like latch onto and like survive. Exactly. So basically no, that's their, their mission no. this entire episode. So then it cuts to Mr. Gallant jerking off in his bed. To <laughs> trying <Michael> to jerk <laughs> off. Langdon. Trying to. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> he didn't get there. <laughs> I didn't know if I saw anything or not. But he's, so he's trying to jerk off and he sees none other than 
the rubber man mm -hmm. finally shows his i mean doesn't show his face right, we don't know his face but like he's his there. latex all over the his place latex face and it's he comes really in creepy. and they just like do it so yeah really he aggressively. sees him he walks in he was like oh and yeah. i'm assuming he's, he's assuming that it's michael langdon he's it's like michael for langdon. sure because they literally just stopped talking about sex and then yeah the end of the scene um while they're effing um he his grandma passes by and he can like hear them moaning she can hear them and yeah. so then she opens the door why does nobody lock their doors i don't understand yeah it wasn't even it wasn't even closed it was like a it was skew like a, a little bit yeah, yeah. Like. so she <laughs> sees them effing she's each like other. oh i am gagged, <laughs> gagged and she and like appalled. hobbles over to like the committee right so she goes to see mrs mead and she was like i need to tell you something but i don't want to get in trouble but also but i, I, I do because like, I, I want a spot at the next spot. place exactly and so then it cuts back to our lovebirds. Yep. And they're still trying to get away, but then they watch Michael leave his room. Right. So at this point, it's pretty much confirmed that Michael was not in the latex suit. If you didn't See, think... that's the thing too. Yes, you're right. Because the way they edited it, it was like, right. he, they're doing it. And then Michael's just like walking he, through like, the hallway. Slowly, so like, yeah. yeah, it's not him. So it's not him. So they go into his room and they find a laptop. A Mac laptop. An Apple laptop. Let's not talk about that, though, because I'm going to get really yeah. bent about it. But anyway, so there's a little Mac laptop. It's powered up. And she, they read, like, emails, I think, or a report, which basically says Miss Venable has been creating fake rules in this bunker, including the one where it says you're not allowed to have consensual sex. Right. So I was reading one of the reviews quickly, and it was saying that, like, these little things were kind of left. These, these huge hints or clues were kind of left Mm -hmm. for people to find so like the laptop right one of the writers was like it was left so perfectly like on his bed yeah. like c like turned to his emails with like venables like email yeah. like so everything was so perfectly laid out so it was that, almost like a trap so like do you think it's it's like he coerced them to like find that information or like so in some way you know but the way that the episode ends doesn't work out well for them anyway unless he wanted I mean, to create chaos yeah is what you're trying yeah, to say. yeah yeah for sure right, got yeah it, yeah got it, got it. fair enough yeah, I would like, agree with he's that. He's not dumb enough to like leave his laptop unlocked like on his bed with the, like do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So he definitely has a master plan. That's fair. So so they're like, oh my gosh, like it's yeah. all lies, dot com. <laughs> he's like, we could have sex now. Like, yeah, it's like basically we can fuck that's like the first thing that they thought of. And then um if the camera pans up uh, and so it freaky. shows Wait, um, how was he there when he's screwing that guy? I, I think he was done. True. Like he finished, <laughs> I thought. <laughs> so he, he went up top and now he's like creepish yeah on he's the just wall. suck on like spider-man like suck <laughs> on the wall <laughs> so can we quickly just confirm slash talk i don't i guess we can't confirm but we can speculate at this point who the rubber i man mean is. i think yeah i think it's pretty okay for us to speculate that it's it's tate, it's langdon. tate langdon right under that suit aka because like who would it be, who else would it be father, father slash ghost father yeah which means do you think so two questions comes from that number one uh does that mean that he's basically following michael around michael, as yeah. a ghost like like a spirit he has like spirits around spiritual him spiritual guy yeah essentially number two what is his current purpose? Just to F guys? I and asked girls you that question and, and so I don't know that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you that. Well, like, I was like, Jay, like, what does he just do? He just walks around and like screws people? Like I don't get like is that his evil chaos, Yeah, I like I don't know. I mean, the one question that we have too is why Tate becomes this rubber man, which isn't really explained in Murder House that much. Why he decides to just don this outfit and like so what gets, I was asking, yeah, what I was asking <laughs> J Lag, and it might not have anything to do with this season, but like maybe if you guys know our listeners, like maybe you guys can answer this for us. What I didn't understand was like as Tate, he was like right. this really deranged uh, teenager who went and shot up this school. Right. That's how he was violent. That's how he was evil. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand why it the became sexual so sexual right. and like he became like the rubber man and like having to like right you know rape and, and screw all these people so like i didn't understand that mm -hmm. transition yeah I don't but know. maybe it just means like he's just an evil spirit he's just an evil presence right and so wherever he can cause chaos that's where he kind of lurks in sure. maybe i don't know yeah that's fair the second question or i guess the third question i have is do you think that michael knows i don't i don't know that that's a good question. i don't know let us Look, know what you guys think at the end of the day like if this guy is the devil if michael langdon is the devil he must know that, that there are spirits around him mm -hmm. one is probably like his evil father him. yeah like right. he must know right for sure fair enough 
All right, cutting to the Venable interview. So Miss Venable is now the second yeah. person to. I don't know if it was. Like I don't know if it was a full. Yeah, interview. I don't think it was a full. I think he was just like, I gotta talk to you, girl. Like, let's talk. Because like that email I got. So right. So it was more like that. She approaches him about that, or he approaches her, saying, "You're creating these fake rules." Yeah. And she was like, "I got those rules from like the yeah like the people." So and he's like, you? he's like, no, girl, I was there from the beginning. Just, no, 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 my rules were like from before you came along and like above to us from a secret person. Right. He's like, there's no secret person, girl. Like I'm the I'm the Did person. Did you believe her? No. So she, you definitely think that she made those. Yeah, rules. Okay. <laughs> for sure. Fair and enough. I think you can kind of just see that in, in how she's talking. And I totally like, uh, 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 and I totally uh, uh, like stand by her yeah. for sure. Like as a woman, I'm like, no, girl, I get you. <laughs> as a woman, because she even says she goes like, you guys had your chance. Like you men. Like you men had your chance. You guys screwed up the world you blew up the world and now like it's our time to like right. rule so i feel like she's definitely on this high of like let me do me right let me control it the way i want to control it whether or not that's how it was supposed to be uh -huh. but she's on this tip so like right. i can definitely understand how she's um you know tweaking these rules for her own thing sure. for her own gain um d so there has been some speculation that miss venable could be ally from AHS cult, cult which was last yeah. season because by the end of AHS cult she creates her own cult her own feminism yes. cult yeah like I could see the cult. I could see the do connection you think that's possible but meh, I don't know like is there a reason why they would even do that in the first place like why I don't bother I think Ms. Venable already has enough history like that I, I don't know understand about. why you would make that connection if you don't make it from the start yeah do you know what I mean but then again like the two major similarities between the two characters is Ali started off as a scared fearless person or f like fearful person into this m like man hating like killer mm -hmm. essentially she killed her wife and then she killed kai anderson so it could quite easily but turn I think, into this like uh, post-apocalyptic version of herself which is like miss venable you know what yeah I mean? it could very well be but i also think that like this show and ryan murphy they love to explore like the female character right a lot so it's like so, so why it's like give it, that to the it could be in just another female story do you know sure, what i mean in sure. this in this world who knows the only reason why i don't think like i feel like that theory is dash is because we do see her like effed up back like it looks like she had yeah. scoliosis or something. Yeah, something so one of the things that michael forces her to do which was a very powerful power move for him was he forces her to undress mm -hmm. and she's extremely uncomfortable she's yeah, like she I, i'm not to. gonna do this this is that's so inappropriate and he was like do you want to survive or not like this is a part of your interview basically mm -hmm. and so she kind of has to oblige she takes off like he takes off her like her dress halfway and he sees like the scar yeah and he asks her like all these very detailed questions like does it hurt does it make you sad like and she starts crying sir yeah. paulson's amazing like obviously like this girl has trauma and like For scars sure. and that's the reason why she doesn't want people to like sleep together because exactly. like she probably doesn't have any love yeah and, and i think on top of that i just think that she's it'll be very interesting to see where they take this character because yes she's not just this like mistress that like has a cane and she's such a strict biatch mm -hmm. like there's definitely some oh true trauma. she walks with a cane she walks with a cane yeah that. she's yeah, like yeah. left up true true so i don't know she does ask at the end of all of it like did i pass and he's like no sorry like he does he says no like no no i think he meant like no as in like i'm not done yet i don't know what he meant but he didn't explain because then i think he meant like no me, like i'm not done yet oh, right okay sure that was so tight if you meant yeah, like i don't that. think that it was like the end of the yeah movie, really but we'll see um so she at that moment she gets like a knock on the door and uh mrs mead comes yeah. in while she's like half undressed yeah. and he's she's like i need to talk to miss Ven venable and they, so they talk like literally just outside yeah of the doors, like they're so stupid and they're like saying like oh he's definitely conspiring with mr gallant like they're together whatever and on top of that mrs mead says that the grandma came forward and ratted mm -hmm. Mr. Galan out and they're like, he's having sex with somebody um, yeah. in the room. So now he needs to get punished. So they take him and hang him by his arms, like uh, Mr. Galan, and they say like, why did you do it? And he's basically like, I don't even care. He's like screaming. He said, I think he said like, like gay heroes yeah. of like the seventies or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like while he's getting whipped, he's like, bah, nah, nah, nah. like yeah, he's like he's saying everybody's name. It's just like pretty funny. I wish I knew the references, but I'm like way too young for that. So, uh, <laughs> she, so he's like yelling and um, yeah. And he's just enjoying it because yeah, he's, he's like, enjoying it. He's like, I also, do this. He was so. like, it was totally worth it for him. He yeah. was like, I love, I like love getting effed. So I don't yeah. care. Um, so then in that moment, Michael comes in. Mm -hmm. So they leave him kind of hanging mm -hmm. and 
then Michael comes in and he was like, hey, like, miss ya, yeah. whatever. And he's like, that was good, eh? That was some good And then Michael's sex. like, well, what the F are you talking he's about? like, what are you talking about? I never came into your room before. And he essentially tells him, like, you, like, I, I wasn't the one in the rubber suit. Because mm-hmm. he's like, you're the one that was wearing the rubber suit. And he has, like, his moment where he's basically like, I would never F you if you were, like, the last man on earth. And you basically Basically, you almost are. He calls, he essentially says, like, Mr. Galan is, like, a selfish man. Yeah. And um, he's, like, your grandma is, uh, like, onto you. She was the yeah. one that, put like, put you here. Yeah. She's the one that told so on you. So he's basically ripping this guy apart, like, yeah. trying to break him down as much as he can. Yeah. And then he re- decides to release him. He was, like, yeah. he was like, yeah, now you have this information. Your grandma, like, ratted you out. What are you going to do about it? And he, he unlocks them. And uh, then it cuts to this really interesting scene between... Mm-hmm. Um, the talk show host, I forget her name in the show, but yeah, um, it was like Coco, it was her assistant, it was Evie, and then like the talk show host talk that's show supposed host, to be Oprah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and I love this conversation. I just think just because like it was so cute between you know, like the new generation and the old generation right. with these four women, and very valid arguments on both sides, right? And it was like things that you would not necessarily talk about in the real world, but because they're trapped together in this bunker, they have nothing else to do, yeah, they're in front of each other all day, every day, like these conversations are gonna be had yeah right so the youngins are like you guys are irrelevant now like you had two channels when you were growing yeah. up and the other side of it though like the older ones are yeah are like you guys are so vapid everything to you is very like fast 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 like you have too many you need options. everything you need everything in your life which there is so many valid points on both sides mm-hmm. so it was really interesting to see that dynamic like you said mm-hmm. so once that one whole- of the interesting and i was telling you this too one of the interesting things that i appreciated with evie's character this episode because i really didn't understand why like joan collins was in this show at all like, why are you here? last episode but this one i was like oh my god i love her character right. in this episode at least because she was like like i need to be here because i gotta teach the new generation about culture and like art and like right really show them like what this all means yeah. you guys aren't gonna do that and yeah. i was like oh my god that's so true like we need her like yeah. grandma we need her in here um so there was like a little <laughs> bit of appreciation for her character Fair for enough, me yeah. um but yeah that scene was really was i don't powerful. know i really like that scene yeah like the four women yeah um and then mr gallant comes in with his like full outfit yeah and he basically shows up and is like bitch what i'm like here now yeah and uh he ha- talks he, he just like spills all the tea to the grandma. grandma yeah and he's like i can't believe that you ratted me out and she was like you know what it's like no shade against you i just wanted to like no she's sure like you spot. literally wasted your life yeah you did all these things you own hair salons and you just like sm- like sorted it away like you wasted everything i ever gave to you i yeah. gave you a chance like your grandfather didn't even want to like support you right she's like you wasted your life like so i'm gonna use the rest of the life i have and like try to get to the sanctuary exactly so she's like i didn't give a shit about you <laughs> so tight yeah um like she also came out of nowhere too with like a boss ass line it's like, true it's true i wasn't expecting that i was feeling it i was down for that and, and then, then he was just like shook and like, then like everyone down. else like dipped yeah and then he's just like kind of stays and there. he's he's he, staying like, there like in the living room um then it cuts to our couple like our little romeo and yeah. juliet and they are like yes that's f each other yeah he's now. just like what who cares now like yeah. there's no rules there's no she was rules. lying the whole time like, so why serious. not so they f each other and then um, while Mr. Gallant is staying, while he's in that room mm-hmm. area, the music changes mm-hmm. and then he sees. So the what does that music symbolize again? I forgot. I just think it sets a different mood. And like you said, I think there's a lot of like manipulation that's happening with the cooperative and Michael. Like, I think there's definitely like probably a playlist up in that iTunes, mm. like, like, you know, laptop. And he's like changing it mm. to make people feel some type of way. Also, I think it's just like the soundtrack of HS, the show. Yeah. Know? So the soundtrack changes. I don't know what the song is. I'm sure it's extremely yeah, relevant. Yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comments what it is. so You can let <laughs> us know your music knowledge. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so they walk in and he sees the, rub- the, the rubber man. Yeah. And he follows him. He's time. like, oh, yeah. So he, so follows, like he him, follows him like, And you think that he's like ready to like F again. And I'm like, damn, this guy's like ready again. Yeah. Um, so he goes upstairs he goes to a room and he sees him in this room and then he like throws him on the bed they like wrestle a little bit wrestle a little bit 
and you can see him getting kind of like fired up and like a little bit passionate you're like ooh, like more sex mm -hmm. and then he's like oh i'm not like if i was the last man alive then you can like, see that he's getting yeah pissed. he's getting like amped up so then he grabs like a, a pair, of, pair scissors. of scissors or something on the side he grabs them and just like goes hard he just in. like stabs the shit out of the stabs rubber man the shit out of the rubber man and i was like yo this is crazy but then of course michael langton comes in at that exact moment and it's a it's a cool shot because like he turns he sees Michael Langdon and then he looks back he down he looks back down yeah and it's R I P Nana yeah it's like, Evie jeez I did. I wasn't expecting that I, don't I know. was totally expecting it because I just feel like it's like one of those things that like they the show do. would do yeah yeah um but also I was like damn like she she she's dead now like he fully killed his grandma like, are they gonna eat her <laughs> like what's Ew. gonna happen um anyways uh then it cuts to the couple getting caught the next i think it was the next morning yeah yeah um and they're like get out of bed so they pull them out of bed and they're about to get shot essentially yeah. mrs mead is like ready to shoot him and then she like she has her like strong man to like do it yeah and so they're about to shoot and timothy says like i'm sorry emily and then he hits somebody with a hose the gun falls and then he shoots at Mead mm -hmm. and like right like basically right in the chest. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh shit, she's dead. Oh, she's dead, dead. And then he tries to shoot like the other guy, but then there's like a struggle there and he gets like beat down again. Right. So basically they're still like in peril. Right. By next episode, I'm right. sure I don't know what's gonna like, happen. Like something's gonna happen to them. And then um it cuts to Mrs. Mead and she's like And she leaking. was like she was like glitching out. She's like, she's like oh, my chest. Uh, uh. I'm like, oh she's wearing like a like a, Yeah, that's that's vest, what I thought too. Yeah. Which I was like, that's so annoying, but yeah. fine. Uh they're like pulling some Riverdale shit over yeah. here. So um they like she looks, but I'm like, no, there's a gigantic hole in her. Yeah. But it's and it like was like white fl white fluid like coming out yeah, of it's her. Like fluid, it's on blood. And then you're like, Great, she's an android. Yeah. And that's how the episode ends. Yeah, that's so it. So what did you think of, like, how that I mean, that was definitely, was... like, my whole, like, shook moment, for sure. Because I was like, wait, what? Think... There's robots in this season, too? Yeah, I'm like, like, what's going on? Like, Westworld? What do you think that all means? I know, it's totally I Westworld. mean, I don't know. I'm assuming she's a robot. Like, a lot of the reviews I read said that she was probably a robot. So does she know that she's a robot? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm very confused at that. I don't I'm not know. Sure if, like, I bet you she probably her. didn't know she was a robot. Because what we do remember... know about her is, like, she's a rule follower. Yeah, and she and she's stressed that. She's like, I follow rules. like I'm from the maybe like family. in her head like yeah that's why she follows rules because like she's a robot like they were programmed yeah to do that, like, that, that would no totally idea. make sense but like who made this robot i just don't want anything to happen to tim and emily like i really don't y'all know i love my love story so like don't hurt them <laughs> don't kill them i just yeah i don't know i feel like it's too soon to kill these characters off and i feel like they mean something more than yeah. just to kill them off like for this like i feel like they do represent like the future but at the same right? time i'm like but why are you guys here right now other than like to no. try to have forbidden sex like i just don't know more what their that. point is yeah um so yeah i hope they don't die because i just feel like it's stupid. what do you want to see next episode do you want to see the coven are you ready to see coven yes, are you ready to get yes. out of this basement are you I'm, like what do you what I'm do you want ready to see like because technically his tests aren't done yet so i feel no. like they're gonna sit there for a while i mean he did say and i think he did this on purpose so we we're like as an audience we're like ready to like not have to wait like the whole season for this test to happen i thought but he meant like, like this episode i'm gonna be done with but then yeah. it, but then he was he's and i was like, like you lied I just got to me two people yeah. yeah but he's like it's only gonna happen over a few days and yeah. then he's gonna dip so he's only gonna i be bet here, you it's gonna like, take us to like few. episode four or five yeah which makes sense halfway through the no. season which is fine um and then we can see what happens next i just feel like i'm ready for that next layer to come through i just don't know what that's gonna mean yeah um so we'll see how that goes anyway let's get to our recap roundups best, best moment, moment. So my best moment is the conversation between Ms. Venable and Michael Langdon when he is doing this power play with her. Because I thought, number one, Sir Paulson's acting was phenoms. Um, yep. She's like crying secretly, but also enraged, but also embarrassed. Like she's just very, she's such a great actress. And I think that it's, it was a very interesting thing for her to say that whole thing about men effing up the world. Yeah. And now it's like, now it's time. You can definitely you see, can like, see the anger in her, like yeah. the passion that she has for that. For and sure. And you know, like what her vendetta is this yes, whole season, yes. and, like that why she's kind of yeah. Like, that's she's her holding on to her like position for exactly. sure. So that was my best moment. Yeah. What was yours? My best moment was uh, the four women talking: Coco, Mallory, 
and then Dina and Evie. Okay. Yeah. Um, and just like symbolizing like the old generation and the new generation. Um, and I think like just the idea of rebuilding a new world mm -hmm. is going to be a big theme for this season. Yeah. So I think like when you think of rebuilding a new world, like I think you still need a balance of both. I think and what the you new can't, world looks like. Yeah, yeah like you can't just sure. take the new people and be like, you're going to be like in the new world. Like you right. need some of the old people to like, you know, Demo bring you people. that like wisdom and like, you know, so I yeah. just like, I appreciated that little cute combo that they had. Fair. WTF moment. My WTF moment was definitely like the ending with Tim shooting Mead. And I was like, what? <laughs> she's leaking like fluid. Yeah. So she's so a robot. Confusing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where that's going to lead. I really hope it doesn't go like too, too sci-fi because. Yeah. Like already I feel like there's a lot of, a lot of different like horror themes yeah. being introduced. So like, I don't know what it's robots are going to do yeah. here. <laughs> and if that's the case, like. Does that mean that we have to filter out, like who the robots are and who the real like, people are? Like we just are? watched like, Westworld, oh. guys. Like we don't want to deal with <laughs> robots right now. Exactly. Like guys, stick to one genre. My WTF moment was the very opening scene with the snakes because I was like shook it. Yeah. But also I was very excited when I like concluded that you these figured are magical it out. snakes and they're like coming out and they're like alive. I really hope that's true though because <laughs> now we're <laughs> hyping it up. Yeah, if I'm wrong, I'm And it's just upset. like the devil and but his work. I'm so excited to see the witches like beyond excited. Like I was like, I'm so excited to see snakes. Like I've never been that excited <laughs> to see snakes. I was like, yes, magical snakes. They're coming. The witches are coming. Yeah, I'm super, super excited to see all that happen. Plus, it was a really, like, crazy... I was like, what? Yeah. Like, very yeah. shocking moment. MVP. MVP. My MVP, I'm going to go with the OG Evie Gallant. Just because, oh. like, she's RIP. <laughs> like, RIP, like, she's dead now. So, like, Anna. I had to give it to her. Right. Um, but also just because, like, she delivered some boss-ass lines True. in her, like, 20-minute, like, appearance <laughs> that she did on the, se <laughs> on the series. Um, and I was reading a review and, like, even the writer was like, did we actually think Joan Collins was going to stick around to the end? <laughs> no, like, I Abby. Time this shit. So, like, yeah. Yeah, but I just appreciated like I I started off being like, what the f is she doing here? And then I was like, oh no no, like I realized that she's really cute. Yeah. So like yeah, she's not R. I. P. Like, yeah. Nana. R. I. P. Nana. My MVP is gonna be someone that like maybe not a lot of people would agree with, mm -hmm. but I'm down for the rubber band right now. Oh what? <laughs> I just think that he You need some latex? He came in and he just like started effing ish up and he's Like literally. Yeah. <laughs> literally effing people and then effing ish up. I just think that it's adding an extra layer of intrigue to the story, which we we need at this point in time because we don't know what the hell's happening. Well, he's the connection to Michael Langdon, right? Like he's you can't the, yeah. have Michael Langdon without the rubber man. Like <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess you can't. Like literally. At this point you can't. Um, but I just want to know what his purpose is. Is he just going to be a shit disturber like he was in the first season? Mm -hmm. um, is he going to be able to take his mask off eventually and show that he is Tate Langdon? I, I just want to see like how far they're going to push that whole creepy, ooky, spooky rubber man situation. But mm -hmm. I was down for him. LVP. Who's your LVP? My LVP is going to be... Wilhelmina Venable because she thinks she's so like <laughs> like I love her but like girl you're crazy yeah. like what have you been doing down there so she's been and I get it she's, she's very manipulative like she's using her own things to like control people yeah. she's shady I get it she was trying to find a way to like control everyone and right. probably use fear against them but like girl like you gotta calm down relax yeah but at the same time I'm sure she's gonna come through for us right. I'm sure she will I but like for this episode she was my LVP fair enough my LVP is going to be Mr. Gallant because mm -hmm. I think we had the same question last episode. What is Evan Peters slash Mr. Gallant's like story and what is his purpose? He just killed his Nana. Like what is his, what what's is gonna he going to do after? now? Yeah. What's the arc going to be? What's his redeeming quality going to be? Is he just like, going to die next? Is like, he the know. symbol of what it means to like be infected by evil? Like what, like is right. the rubber man going to go through him? I mean, uh, he did. I mean, he did. <laughs> <laughs> no more sex tracks. Uh, but yeah, just curious to see like what they're going to do yeah, with that after this yeah. episode. But he was also like, wait, like, that's what I mean. He was like, he was getting punished, but he liked it. Like, I'm like, what yeah. are you doing here right now? Like, what's the point yeah. of you? Do you think he'll make it to the sanctuary? No. You don't think? Like, <laughs> I don't okay. think so. So yeah, he's definitely an LVP. The, the best, best line. line. So my best line is, I wouldn't F you if you were the last man on earth and you almost are. Which is hilarious. It was actually hilarious. Because yeah. Um, you, you you hear people say it all the time. Yeah. I wouldn't f you if you were the last man on earth. But like literally, literally, it's like, like the he's the last guy almost, and like, and like he still won't do him. Because like 
I'm pretty, Evan Peters pretty cute. Like, but he, he I think he meant it like there's nothing physically wrong with you. He's like you're, He's just, like, you're just like weak, like you're like a loser. Yeah, yeah I think that's what much. he meant. My best line <laughs> <laughs> is from um, Evie, aka Joan Collins, when she was basically telling off like Evan Peters' character, right. and she's like, "One lifetime of me is worth fifty of yours." Dying. And it was like, "Yo, mic drop! Mic Grab her with the mic drop!" <laughs> like it yeah, was crazy because it, it was so true. She's like, "I've lived my life, and I can still live it." And like, you've wasted yours on so many different things. Like, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter how young you are. Because he right. was saying, "Like, I'm, st- I'm still young. Like, I still want to live." Yeah. She's like, "Yeah, but what have you done in the thirty years? Like, you've wasted it." So. Right. It was just, uh, it was like every single old person like yelling at our generation, basically <laughs> yeah. being like, "You guys are so waste." You guys are waste people. Yeah, so I love that. <laughs> you love old people yelling at us. Yeah. Um. All right, that's the episode. That's it. That was really good. I was very impressed with it. Uh, I was worried mm-hmm. after the first one. I was like, "Oh God, I don't want to like be here again <laughs> in the bunker. It's so like dark." But yeah. I was really excited about it. I'm excited to see what's next. Mm-hmm. Me too. I really hope they let us sit with Coven for a while and not just yeah. like two, three episodes. So I'm really hoping we time. see someone else next week, you yeah, know? That's fair. Uh, yeah, let us know what you guys think. Are you guys ready for Coven? Uh, what do you think about the season so far, episode two? In comment and subscribe to the channel obviously if you haven't done that yet thanks for listening and guys we always like encourage your commentary under the video so please like if we're getting anything wrong or you want to just add to what we're seeing or you think there's like of a theory like let us know we always uh shout you guys out and get back to you guys so for sure call us out on our grammar issues or whatever yeah like 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 like, 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 like,